In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the trapezoidal rule to find the area under the curve, and I'm also going to show you how to use approximation to solve the distance problem. So instead of drawing rectangles, we're now going to divide the subintervals into trapezoids and then find the sum of the trapezoidal areas. So let's recall the area of a trapezoid. So I'm going to draw my trapezoid actually on its side, such as this. And the reason that we want to do this is that this is going to be our width. Now in this case, on a trapezoid, this will be our height because it's tilted or a turn on its side. This will be our base one, and this will be our base two. So the area of a trapezoid, remember, is height divided by two times base one plus base two. We can also rewrite this as half times h times base one plus base two. Okay, so let's find the area um, under this curve, which is the same one that we've done before, and it's y equals x squared, and we want to find the area from zero to one, and we're gonna divide it into four subintervals again. So this time, remember, we're drawing trapezoids, so here's the first one, which is actually a triangle, and then we have another trapezoid, and another one, and then our last one here. So the width of each trapezoid is going to be a quarter. And we also know that that will be our height. So we have a half times a quarter. And then the base one will be our left side and the base two will be our right side of each trapezoid. So in this case, our base one is zero. So I'm still gonna write it in to show you. So we have a zero squared. The reason that it's squared, remember, is because our function is y equals x squared. So to find the height, y, we have to square our x value. The right side of our trapezoid is going to be a quarter. So then we have plus a quarter, and then that has to be squared because, again, our function is x squared. So this is our first um, area of our trapezoid. Now I can see that for each of the trapezoids, they are going to be times by a half, and they all have a width of a quarter. So instead of writing this out four times, I'm going to have that half and a quarter factored out in the front. So all I have to do is write down the B1s plus the B2s. All right, so our next trapezoid is the second one over here, and our right side is a quarter. And we're going to square that. Our left side of the second trapezoid is going to be here, and it's going to be a half. And that will be squared. Our third trapezoid, the right side has an x value of a half, so we're going to square that. And then our right side over here is going to be three quarters, all squared. And then finally, our last trapezoid, the tallest one, is going to be three quarters of the right side squared, sorry, on the left side squared, and then plus one squared, which is the right side of the trapezoid. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you notice, but all of these values here, zero, one quarter, a half, and three quarters, notice those are all our left endpoints. And they actually are our left endpoint approximation values. Notice that the quarter, half, three quarters, and the one, those represent our right endpoint and our right endpoint approximations. So doing a little bit of rearranging, I could say, I'm gonna move the quarter in, but basically I'm timesing a quarter by all of the green values that I've circled in green. Those are all our left endpoints. And I'm also taking that quarter and multiplying by all my right endpoints, which I've circled in red. So this is going to be half. Now a quarter times all our left endpoints. If you look back, that's actually my L4, my left endpoint approximation. And my quarter times my right endpoints is actually my right endpoint approximation. So I'm going to bring the numbers from before. So 
L4 was 7 over 32. Remember, that was my underestimate. The 15 over 32 was my overestimate. Putting it all together, I get 11 over 32, which is very close. Remember that the area under the curve of the parabola from 0 to 1 was 1 third. So generally, I can say that the trapezoidal rule, Tn, is half times the left n approximation plus the right n approximation. Now, this is a very general rule. In your textbook, it'll have a more formal definition, which is a, probably a little bit more complicated, but I thought I would write it down a little bit simpler for you because I think this is a lot easier to remember. Now, you'll notice from what we've done so far, the midpoint and the trapezoid approximations are close to the actual area, but to make it even better, we could use more subintervals. How many more? Well, it'd be great if we could use an infinite number of n values. And then it would be perfectly under the curve. We're going to take a look at this later on. So to finish off, I'm going to show you how to approximate using to solve our distance problems. So just like the velocity problems found in differential calculus, the distance problem is used to formulate the idea of a definite integral, which is the basic concept of integral calculus. So we're going to find the distance traveled by an object using a, during a certain time period if the velocity of the object is known at all times. If the velocity remains constant, then it's easy to find the distance. We can just use distance equals velocity times time. However, often that's not the case, and the velocity varies. And then when it does, then it's not easy to find that distance traveled. So for example, suppose we want to estimate the distance spiked over a 30 second time interval. We take speedometer readings every five seconds and record them in the following table. So if we take a look at this table, during the first five seconds, the velocity, we can let's assume that it doesn't change very much. So we can estimate the distance traveled during that time by assuming that the velocity is constant. So we're going to let the velocity for the first time interval to equal 6 feet per second. So then we have 6 feet per second times 5 seconds which is equal to 30 feet. So we're thinking that in the first five seconds, we've traveled 30 feet. So we can do the same for all the intervals. Now, because I'm assuming that the first time interval from zero to five, we're using a velocity of six, we're going to go to the next five second interval, but then we're gonna use a velocity of eight. So by doing this, we're gonna have all of these time intervals so we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six intervals. Now, because we're using the first velocity, we can consider this to be a left endpoint approximation. So L6 will equal six times five seconds plus eight times five seconds plus the next one is 13 times five seconds plus 17 times five seconds plus 19 times 5 seconds, and then plus 18 times 5 seconds. So plugging all these values into your calculator, you get 405 feet. So that's assuming that our first time interval, it doesn't change much, and we're going to use a velocity of 6 feet per second. Now, we could also have used the end of each time period instead of the beginning as our assumed velocity. So by doing the end points, that means we're going to be using our right side. So there are still six time intervals, but this time, let's say that instead of zero to five seconds, sorry, from zero to five seconds, we're going to assume that we're traveling eight feet per second instead of six. So now we have eight times five. And the second time interval from five to 10 seconds, we're assuming that we're traveling at 13 feet per second. So we have 13 times five, and then so on. So we got 17 times 5, 19 times 5, 18 times 5. And then lastly, we will use the last velocity, which is now 16 times 5. So when we do our right endpoint, we will get 
455 feet because we're starting at a higher velocity. We're ending up at a higher velocity. Uh, well, not necessarily because we we can see that it increases, but then it also slows down. However, if we wanted a more accurate estimate, we could take velocity readings every two seconds or maybe even every second. And then that way we can get more readings and more accuracy. And there you go. That's how we can use approximation to solve a distance problem given velocities.